it's really hard to step aside. I mean, especially when I'm passionate about the values I already created, you know? <laughs> and it, it, you know, I had to take a big bite of humble pie and, and just say, look, this is our company. And and I wanted alignment. Um, my previous company, we, we didn't really give out much equity in the company. So there weren't any other owners, but just a, a handful. And with this business, I wanted everybody to be owners. I wanted people to take ownership. And 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 I just realized if I was going to do that, I needed to get out of the way and, and let other people be owners and, and create something that we all could enjoy together, not just something I created. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Today we look at core values, specifically how do you create core values that will align people? Uh, the creation of core values is something that a lot of people have to figure out. They have to do uh, the, it the wrong way first to figure out the right way. Today we're going to walk you through that with our special guest. He is the co-founder of Homey. They're a unique real estate company that is expanding out of the Utah market into across the nationwide. Uh, take a look at what they're doing. Really is amazing work. But Johnny uh, talks about creating core values and really how he stumbled in the beginning, what really helped him figure out how to create them. We go through some of the nuances of that inside this episode. Why you want core values is because it will reduce your um, attrition. You'll be able to retain your key employees. You'll be able to uh, align work. People will feel empowered since they will make their decisions and we'll have a, more of a self-managing company than that of a micromanagement company. So values are a very important aspect. We've talked about them a lot on this, but today we go in deep about creating your core values. So in this episode, you're going to learn a lot about out what it takes to be a great leader. And if you're curious about what specifically you want to work on, then make sure you keep tuning in uh, to episodes. But if you really want to go deeper to it, I offer this up to you because if you're listening to, to three or four episodes and you just haven't reached out to me yet, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that. If you know that you want to be a leader or you have someone on your team that you want them to be a leader, I've got some tools and, and trainings I can give them, but I really would love to talk to you first. Just go to genehammett.com and schedule your call. I'd love to help you do that now. Now here's the interview with Johnny. Johnny, how are you? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm excited to have you on the podcast, Growth Think Tank, where we talk about leadership and growth. Uh, tell us about your company, Homie. Yeah, Homie is the future of real estate. Um, we help people buy and sell homes. Uh, we, we offer transparency, education, choice. Essentially, we have realtors that uh, just charge a, a low flat fee, and we have a mortgage company that guarantees the lowest interest rate. We have an insurance company to get you home insurance and a title company. So we're, we're trying to automate and streamline the entire process of buying and selling a home. Love that. Real estate has been uh, a very interesting market for this year, I guess. And are you mostly in Utah or other areas as well? I, I would say we're mostly in Utah, but we're in Colorado, Idaho, Arizona, Nevada. Perfect. How many people would you say are on your team? We have about 450 people right now. All right. And that's a, that's a big number. And today's theme is really talking about how do we get alignment across these people? Now that we know that you have 450, I, I want to talk about the ways you get alignment, the ways you use values across this. I want to go back in the future, in the, you know, when you first started, because I think a lot of people listening in here might not have 450 employees. They might have 20. But what was the first point where you realized we need to really emphasize the values uh, inside of our company? Yeah, immediately. I, I felt like uh, I, I needed to do it right away because I had started a previous company I called Intrata. And about seven years into that company, we were pretty aimless in terms of culture and values. And uh, I met a lady named Ann Rhodes, who was the chief people officer of Southwest Airlines, she, former co-founder of JetBlue. And she uh, she wrote a book called Built on Values. And, and it was a blueprint of how to establish values at a company. And, and man, we implemented that. We hired her. She gave us direction on, on how to do that. And I watched our company change for the better. I watched metrics improve, turnover decrease, happiness improve. So yeah, starting Homie, I knew it was the right thing to do right away. Now, I, I know there's a book out there around this but when you were putting together the values, what could you walk us through that process? Yeah, so I, I actually had forgotten what I read. So I just kind of winged it with homie because I thought I knew everything uh, about values and culture. So I just I just established what I felt was really important. I talked to some, you know, I had a couple of co-founders, talked to them 
and they all agreed. We had five values in place and, you know, we, we just kind of ran with those and we had a, our first company meeting, you know, with, I think seven of us, you know, our first couple programmers and it went well, uh, it, it felt so that that's kind of how it began. Now, would you say that you pick aspirational values or did you pick more the authentic version of the values, meaning that the ones that you are natural to you already? I, I think it was a mixture. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I, I knew a couple of my partners and um, I, I may have been analyzing their weaknesses instead of my own when creating some of those values. And so I, you know, I put a couple in place um, that I, I would hope would steer us all in the way that I wanted to go as the CEO. But what, what I, what I came to find out, you know, a, a few months in a few, like a year in, they weren't sticking. We, we weren't aligned. And, and I, you know, it, it was because I had done it just on my own without involving others in that creation process. That is a big lesson that I think you had, you got to walk us through that because how did you know they weren't sticking? Um, I, I would say from my previous experience, you know, when we when we had a little values retreat with several key leaders and, and leaders not by title, but um, by attitude within the company, we came back and introduced those values to our company and everybody, it was like a sponge. Everyone just absorbed them and and, and it felt right. They, they really uh, felt like they were aligned with, with what we were trying to accomplish. And, and a lot of aspirational stuff too, on things we were doing really bad that we knew we needed to improve on. And so I, I think that rallied everybody at my previous company and I just didn't see it. So that, that didn't, that wasn't, it wasn't the same feeling. It wasn't the same excitement, you know, a year in and, and I, I didn't really think about it, but when I, when I did think about it, I'm like, huh, no one, you know, this is a different experience. People aren't into it. Like my old company. Johnny just said the values weren't sticking. And what he means by that is they just weren't being used as a tool across the company. We weren't living the values. And the big problem we have here, and people know this, they, they say the words back, but you can't just have your values on the wall of your company and expect that to be enough. You want to create rituals inside the organization, like shout outs that uh, he mentions a little bit later into the episode, but also other ways to create a real recency effect of what the values are, why we want them, and who's really living them, and, and show that as a form of recognition. All those things across living the values, plus many, many more from um, hiring people to onboarding. We have some resources coming out here soon. We hope to, to give you, but I want you to know that you can't just put them on the wall and expect that enough. If you want them to align people, you've got to live the values. And that's the big lesson for today. Back to Johnny. When you um, decided they weren't into it, did you guys recast the values at that point and, and change the approach instead of you doing it? You included other people is what I'm, what I think I heard you say. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I ended up reading that, that book again, you know, to, okay. follow, to see if, if I had done it right at the beginning. And I'm like, no, I, I totally messed up. So, so yeah, we, we, uh, we had a group of volunteers that got together to be our values committee at Homie, and I stepped out of the picture and I just said, "Look, you can scrap everything I created. You know, you can uh, keep anything that you want. I don't care. I want I want us to have values that we that really mean something to us and that are going to direct the future of our company." And so, over a three day period, uh, these individuals got together, and out of the five, they scrapped three of them and they kept two, and then they added two more. And so so, and, and when they came back and proposed them, like I could not have done it better, like myself, like I, it was so right. And they, they analyzed what was good with the company and they set values to keep that good going at the company. They analyzed what was bad at the company and they set aspirational values to eliminate the bad at the company or, or, you know, not necessarily the bad, but just challenges that we've had. So, uh, but yeah, and, and since then, and I think because it was a larger group in the company too, when we reintroduced that to. I don't know how many employees we had at the time. Maybe it was, you know, was less than a hundred for sure. And everybody just, you know, absorbed them and they have been our North Star ever since. Now, I want to put a spotlight on why does this values committee work? Well, the big thing is inclusion. When you want people to take ownership of it, you want to make sure that you include them into the process of defining the work. For example, if you were uh, going to change the strategy of a company and, and change the way we go to, to market, then you want to include include people in it, especially those that you want to, to buy in and fully be aligned with what we're doing. And if you want people to be all in, you want to make sure you include as many people as possible. Now, you may have hundreds of people in your, your company, just 
just like Johnny does. Uh, he may not be able to include everyone in, but he had a culture committee, and it's a really smart way to include them. And the thing that I want to highlight here is he's willing to step aside. That is the key here because you want to make sure that people are doing this and they're included. That gives them a sense of ownership. Now back to Johnny. I do want to ask you about the committee. Looking back at it, it seems like that was a smart leadership role to do. What I heard you say is we we picked some leaders that were across the company, not necessarily by title, but just by you know really kind of charged up around what they're, we're doing and where we're going. And you stepped out. Anything you learned in that journey that you would share with us? Uh, yeah, it's really hard to step aside. I mean, especially when I'm passionionate about the values I already created, you know, <laughs> and it, it, you know, I had to take a big bite of humble pie and, and just say, look, this is our company. And, and I wanted alignment. Um, my previous company, we, we didn't really give out much equity in the company. So there weren't any other owners, but just a, a handful. And with this business, I wanted everybody to be owners. I wanted people to take ownership. And, and, and I just realized if I was going to do that, I needed to get out of the way and, and let other people be owners and, and create something that we all could enjoy together, not just something I created. Johnny, you just touched on another big topic that's a theme on this podcast is fast growth leaders tend to want people to feel like owners so that they behave and think like owners, so that they take ownership of so the challenges in front of them. And one of the, the principles of that is inclusion, which is what you did with this committee uh, on values is including people. When you think about ownership, what else do you think drives that feeling of ownership across the company? I, I think autonomy uh, drives ownership. I, I feel like the, the permission to fail. And, you know, I, I don't know, I, I have mixed signals from people that have worked for me on my leadership style, but I, I, I feel it is pretty deliberate. But if I, if, if I hire you and I trust you and you're an expert in your field, I'm going to do my best to remo remove roadblocks for you. My one-on-ones are going to be asking, you know, like, how are things going personally, privately, you know, how, how is business and, and what roadblocks can I help to remove? But, you know, in, in, in some instances, when I get that wrong and I hire the, a person that might not have the skill that I thought they did, I have to be a little bit more hands-on and, and, and it's hard. And I don't think, I don't think those people feel as much ownership when I have to get involved. You know, it, I, I, I still try to be a coach more than a micromanager, but I would say, yeah, I, I, I've done really good at hiring amazing people. So I've, I've hardly had to micromanage with this new company. I, I really have an amazing team where I, I, I've, I've been able to to focus on other things and let them do their job. And I think they feel ownership because of that. I want to take us back to the values because we've been talking about, you know, how did you discover the values? You went through the, the first year. We've got a recast of the values to the value committee. Now we've got to figure out how do we truly make this a part of who we are? How do we align around them? How do we uh, live the values? Whatever words you want to say, what would we see inside your organization on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis as it relates to values? Yeah, I, and, and I can... I, I can kind of hop from one value to another and, and I'm happy to have you interject here as well. But yeah, I, I would say who we are, what we're doing, we're trying to disrupt the real estate industry. So disruption is clearly a value. And and we don't we don't use the words of disruption or, you know, we, we try to create phrases that can have a bigger definition underneath of them. So the status ain't quo is our value of disruption. And the status ain't quo, like that, that, that applies to us internally as much as it, it applies externally. So we are known as the real estate disruptor in every market that we're in, while at the same time, we have to continually rethink the way we're doing things and change is hard. You know, we, we, we can poke fun at, you know, the old traditional realtor. Um, but the truth is we recognize how hard change is internally. So that value is so important to us. So that that's one that I think is, is just clear. Like anybody who joins us, who's been in this industry, they're joining us because they want to see change. So that, that's a, that's a clear value. And we, you know, in new hire trainings or new, new hire orientation, we introduce the values. Every company meeting, we highlight a value. Um, you know, we, we just try to uh, include them often to remind people about them. But I think pushing it from the top as, as the CEO and, and our executive team, um, I think has set a tone to where you just hear them brought up on, on a daily basis. I want to dive into some of the specifics behind this because you can say at every company meeting, we highlight the value. What does that really look like? Yeah. So balance is another one. And, and again, we use that. We use a phrase. So fight for your right is the phrase for balance. Um, but yeah, at our, at our last company meeting, balance was one that we focused on. So that we, I just, you know, we, we, as an executive team said, who really lives this value and who could preach to the company and, and, and challenge us to be better balanced individuals. So fight for your right. 
like it, it was the, the individual spoke about how, you know, as, as a company, we can't help you balance your life. Like it's your choice. You have to say no to your boss on certain projects. You have to say, sorry, I can't, I have a kid's, you know, play that night, you know? So, so part of this balance that work is part of your life, but it's not your life. And so there, there's, you know, great discussions around it to where, you know, and it comes from different individuals within the company. It's, it's not just always coming from me or, or one of the other co-founders. It's, it's people with in the company who live the value, who can then express how they live that value and how you can too. What we see that's unique, I know that maybe not everything is, is unique to you because you're living it, but you may know what's not being done. You guys do, do a little bit differently as it relates to values. You know, I, I, I uh, implemented kind of a mental health strategy a couple years ago before COVID, thank, thank goodness before COVID. Um, and what I came to find out was that this mental fitness program was actually foundational to our values. So for example, balance, like if, if you look at traditional therapy, you have to understand how to set boundaries. You have to have self-love and self-care to stand up for yourself, to have a boundary in order to have balance, you know, to disrupt yourself. You know, we're trying to disrupt an industry, but to disrupt, disrupt yourself, you have to look in the mirror. You have to go deep. You know, humility is another value that the phrase is check yourself before you wreck yourself and, and, and humility, like how, how can you be humble? Like, how do you know that you're being humble? And to really analyze it, uh, we've, we've gone to mental fitness principles where we've recognized that confidence is humility, true confidence. And so if you're feeling less than or better than you're insecure, you're not really humble. If you're comparing anybody, you're not humble. You know, if, if you're putting yourself down or putting other people on pedestals, you're not humble. And, and this is like, it, it's, it's an insane mental fitness workout to really analyze these values and analyze yourself because it's so easy to point fingers and, and look at others not living the values or being off with their own mental fitness. And so to me, that has been huge. And especially during COVID, the crazy elections, you know, the, the, the fires that are going on everywhere, you know, like all, all the crazy, you know, worldwide catastrophes and the lockdowns. And like, there's so many issues going on that it's, it's hard to be balance. It's hard to care to disrupt a business. It's hard to be humble, like where all these competing voices are coming in. So we have a mental fitness hour every Wednesday for anybody to join. And I lead that. And people have brought up all sorts of stuff. And to me, that goes to our value of loyalty as well, which is we've got your back. And Homie as a company, our tagline, our trademark is we've got your back. So it, you know, like Homie's got your back. And man, I've, I've witnessed our people living that value by supporting each other through these difficult circumstances. Uh, more than I ever have in my life. Of course, I think we've had more challenges than I've ever seen in my entire life. But it's like that mental fitness piece to me is what is very special about our culture. Johnny, I want to wrap this up with something I'm noticing here. You're listing off the values and you went with more fun kind of things. Like if I go back to humility, check yourself or who you wreck yourself, which is something I maybe say a little bit too much in my house. <laughs> um, I know you have eight kids. You probably say a lot more than I do. <laughs> but you you didn't go for what tip people typically do, which is a very you know straightforward uh, way of doing it. It's it's more of a fun way to do it. Like we have your back. That's about loyalty. But you have to kind of. It's a great way to do this. Did you was this intentional? I know the committee did this, but um, you 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 loved it. You already said that. Yeah, it, it absolutely was intentional, and and I learned that from my previous company too. And and we we came up with phrases, and you can have bullet points underneath these phrases. You know that they can just broaden the definition. But yeah, the the fun phrases make it memorable. You know, if it was just humility, loyalty, balance, disruption, it, you know, can sound like any company out there, but check yourself. We've got your back fight for your right. The status ain't quo. Like that's unique to homie. No one else has those. And, and it allows for that, you know, the inclusion of additional definitions to really hone in on the type of company we want to be without having, without having to have 10 or 20 core values. You know, the, these four really embody, you know, probably 10 or 20 core values. I did this with a client once and I remembered this thing they were talking about customer service and like I was like is that really a value and they're like well yeah it is and we bat I said let me challenge you a little bit let me let's come up with something more fun and it didn't come from the CEO or the founder it came from one of the key employees but they said customers for life yeah and everyone lit up and said that's what we're going for we want customers for life we don't want to make sure when they order once they want to keep keep ordering from us and you you realized this inside your own uh, values and how you use them Johnny I really appreciate you being here I'm going to give you one more chance to, to bring anything that we have 
haven't talked about as it relates to values so that you can put a light on that for us? Yeah, I think any company that's successful has amazing people. Like every business is about people. I don't care if it's tech or manufacturing. And so that 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 piece on mental fitness, I, I feel like we've really brought in a sense of humanity into the workforce. Like when we do our one-on-ones, I highly encourage everybody through my own example of asking people like, you know, are you going to be able to hit that project deadline? You know, do you have something personal in your life going on? You know, be, be real. Let's talk. Like not just how are you doing? Oh, good. Fine. Great. All right. Let's get to the deadlines that you have. You know, it's, I, I think if we really focus on people, which is what core values do, core values focus on people. Um, but really, especially in today's day and age with this pandemic that we're in, like if you can dig and just say, no, tell me, tell me how your weekend really was like you doing okay. And, and to me, that has set a tone that I, 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 I just think, you know, the, the values then shine even brighter because I can witness my, my co-founders, all my executives, my managers, we hire people that care about others. And, and, and that's been, I, I think, a defining part of our business. And I want to, I would recommend everybody switching their focus to be more human-based than, than focusing on, you know, than on just shareholder value. Johnny, I really appreciate you being here, sharing your wisdom across all of this as it relates to values and leading a fast growth companies. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to wrap up here. Johnny's listening in to make sure I get this right. But what I uh, really love about today's interview is the fact that he realized that him coming up with himself maybe isn't the best way, that he had to engage the entire team. I've talked about this. It really is about inclusion. When you include people into the process, they're more likely to take ownership. You include them into um, making it a part of the everyday. It really does make a powerful way across the company and it aligns people together. Now, this mental health fitness or mental fitness that, that Johnny was talking about, really incredible thinking. You did this before you know, COVID. I've talked to a lot of companies that wish they had something like this. So I really appreciate you sharing that with us. But all of this comes back to, are you willing to lead your company? Be the leader that they really deserve. Well, if you have any questions about what your next step is, make sure you reach out to me. I'd love to help you. My name is Gene Hammett. Uh, just go to genehammett.com, schedule your call. I would serve you to be that leader that your team deserves. When you think about growth and you think about leadership, think of Growth Think Tank. As always, leave the courage. We'll see you next time.